things and I think really what impresses me the most about the fact that he's scoring at that rate is the fact that they're winning there's a lot of guys that go and they score a lot of points but their teams do not win so his ability to play within the confines of their team structure and take this team to make them winners really is the most important thing that he's able to do right now and the number one scorer in the league uh, not win this game at the end well when it comes down to it all you want is the opportunity to win and that's one of the things that Thunder has repeatedly done throughout these finals is in the fourth quarter being in that situation a player two here a basket or two here and this Thunder team is up two to one and so as a team you know that you take that into your locker room and you have to fine-tune you have to go and work on your execution those little minute details like that turnover on the out-of-bounds play but this team is in a good situation it's not like they're playing bad but they haven't played their best basketball and once they get to that then they're gonna be in a better situation right back to Miami now right back you gotta translate that and become more of a go-to guy uh, but you look at what he's been able to do, and particularly look at the free throw percentage. This is a guy that in college shot about 70%, and now he's shooting over 80%. That's not something that you normally are able to do as a player, make that large of a jump. So this guy um, incrementally is making exponential jumps in his skill set, and really that's to be commended. But another thing that I want to talk about, though, is you look at this basketball team and the way that they're playing all these great franchises. Never once have I ever seen anybody hang their head. And, and this is a, a basketball team that I think just because of the fact that they're in all these games late really is giving a confidence to them. And they are winning by losing, and they're learning by losing, but they're not giving up. You know, two things can happen in the NBA. You can just accept losing, but this team, every night, they have a fight to them, and they keep fighting each and every night, and they're in these basketball games. They're not getting blown out. And so, really, that's what I take from all these basketball games. Yeah, that's a really good point. And Lately in college basketball, we've seen a lot of flagrant one and flagrant two calls, with the point of emphasis being contact to the head with the elbow. Now as a big man, we're taught to keep the ball away from little aggravating men to immediately get it, chest it, and then pivot towards the basket. Now in doing so, you're causing that contact to the head, and as a big man, you have to make that determination of how you're going to play offensively and whether or not you want to risk a flagrant one or a flagrant two. Well, we must say a, a disclaimer, no Batmans were abused in our filming of that segment right there. Brian Anderson, uh, Anthony Davis, all of those guys roaming the lane, protecting the rim, and making sure that they couldn't get easy looks at the basket. That relegated the Nuggets into jump shooting, into a jump shooting team. Ty Lawson is not a jump shooter. He's a guy that tries to penetrate the defense, create easy looks for his teammates. When you're not able to do that, it changes the dimension of your basketball team. And this Denver Nugget team really did not adapt well throughout this game. You got to credit the defense of the Hornets. They created that situation for the Nuggets, and they stuck to the game plan, something they haven't done all year long. Long. Credit Monty Williams with the game plan that he instituted, but also the players executing it to a T. I would think that offensively, too, as a player, that's got to rattle you even more than if your shot's not falling, is when you try to go up for a shot and it gets you know, swatted out to half court. That's got to that's got to get in your dome, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. It, it really gets into the psyche of a player. And, and w when you struggle offensively, you try to do two things. Either get to the charity stripe and just uh, see the basket go in, or you try to get an easy layup. When you have Anthony Davis, uh, Robin Lopez, all these guys protecting that rim, you got to remember the Hornets are only – Eighth in the association as far as blocks, 5.6. Well, they had 10, so that's almost double the production that you're having against a team that attacks the rim relentlessly. So you got to credit the way that they played, very aggressive on the defensive end, and that's what Monty Williams has wanted all year long, for your defense to be the identity of this basketball team. Monty Williams learning a lot about his team.